Hello there, and welcome to Level Update. Lake Mead and Lake Powell are two of the most critical reservoirs in the United States, both fed by the Colorado River. Together, they provide water to tens of millions of people across Nevada, Arizona, California, and beyond. Today, we're taking a deeper look at their current levels as of September 2025, what the numbers reveal, and why this story matters for the future of the American Southwest. Starting with Lake Mead, as of September 10, 2025, the reservoir stands at about 1,056 feet above sea level. That's a staggering 172 feet below its full pool level of 1,229 feet. To put it simply, Lake Mead has lost more than half of its capacity, and each small drop matters because the lower the water falls, the closer it gets to critical shortage thresholds. Just since yesterday, it slipped by 0.04 feet. That doesn't sound like much, but over weeks and months, those tiny decreases add up to major impacts. The situation at Lake Mead isn't new, but it is worsening. Federal water managers have warned that by July 2026, the reservoir could sink below 1,050 feet, a mark that triggers a Tier 2 water shortage. That would mean mandatory water cuts for states like Arizona and Nevada. In the worst-case scenario, projections even show levels falling to around 2226 feet, dangerously close to the so-called dead pool, when water can no longer flow through Hoover Dam to downstream communities. Lake Maid is more than just a water supply. It's also a source of hydropower. The Hoover Dam generates electricity for over a million people. But as the lake drops, so does its ability to produce power. With every 25 feet of decline, the dam's output shrinks significantly. If levels approach 950 feet, hydropower generation could stop altogether. That's not just a local issue. It's a regional energy crisis in the making. Now let's shift upstream to Lake Powell, the second largest reservoir on the Colorado River. As of September 9, 2025, Powell's elevation is sitting at 3,546 feet above sea level. That's 153 feet below full pool and means the lake is only about 28% full. Over the past year, Powell has lost around 33 feet of elevation, and since its seasonal high earlier this year, it's dropped by another 31 feet. These numbers show a reservoir in steady decline. For Lake Powell, the consequences are especially stark because it is home to Glen Canyon Dam, which also provides hydropower to millions. If the lake falls below 3,490 feet, the dam may no longer be able to generate electricity. Right now, Powell is just about 56 feet above that minimum threshold, which sounds like a cushion, but at the current rate of decline, that safety margin could vanish within a few years if no major inflows arrive. Beyond power, Lake Powell also represents recreation, tourism, and even culture. Falling levels have exposed hidden canyons like the Cathedral in the Desert, places not seen since before the dam was built in the 1960s. While that offers a glimpse of natural beauty, it's also a sobering sign of just how much water has disappeared. Marinas have been forced to close or relocate, boat ramps no longer reach the water, and what was once a vast lake has now shrunk into long, narrow channels. Why are these reservoirs in such trouble? The answer is a combination of drought and overuse. The Colorado River Basin has been locked in a mega drought for over two decades, one of the worst in the past 1,200 years. Snowpack in the Rockies, which feeds the river, has been inconsistent and often melts too early, reducing the runoff that usually refills these lakes. On top of that, warmer temperatures increase evaporation, pulling even more water away from the system. There's also the issue of groundwater depletion. NASA satellite studies have shown that the Colorado River Basin has lost nearly 28 million acre-feet of groundwater in just 20 years. That's nearly the same volume as the entire capacity of Lake Mead. This hidden loss compounds the visible drop in reservoirs, creating a double hit that makes recovery even harder. The human side of this story is just as pressing. 
roughly 40 million people across seven U.S. states and parts of Mexico rely on water from the Colorado River system. Farmers in Arizona and California depend on it to irrigate crops that supply much of the country. Cities like Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Los Angeles draw heavily from these lakes. If water cuts deepen, it's not just rural farmers who will feel it. Urban households could face restrictions as well. Looking ahead, policymakers face tough choices. Current operating guidelines for the Colorado River are set to expire in 2026, and negotiations are already underway to decide how to share the shrinking supply. States are under pressure to compromise, but tensions run high because every drop counts. Without a new agreement, disputes over who gets water and who doesn't will only intensify. At the same time, there's innovation and adaptation happening. Some cities are recycling wastewater, investing in desalination projects, and upgrading irrigation systems to conserve water. But even the most advanced technology can't fully replace the scale of loss these reservoirs are experiencing. Conservation helps, but the sheer volume of water missing from Lake Mead and Lake Powell is so vast that solutions must also address the root cause, over-allocation of the river. So, the story of Lake Mead and Lake Powell is more than just numbers on a chart. It's about the intersection of environment, energy, and human survival. Every foot of decline represents not only less water, but also fewer options for the future. If current trends continue, the next decade could redefine the way the American Southwest thinks about growth, agriculture, and sustainability. And as we close today's update, remember this. These reservoirs are a mirror reflecting how human activity, whether levels stabilize or continue to decline, will depend on both nature's cycles and the choices we make as a society. The Colorado River may no longer be able to sustain the same promises it once did, and facing that reality may be the biggest challenge of all. Despite the challenges facing Lake Mead and Lake Powell, there's still room for optimism. Every conservation effort, every agreement between states, and every breakthrough in water management technology helps buy more time. Nature can also surprise us. One strong winter snowpack can bring temporary relief, reminding us that recovery, while difficult, is still possible. What matters now is awareness and action. By staying informed, supporting smart policies, and making small changes in our own water use, we can all be part of the solution. Together, there's hope that these iconic lakes can remain a vital resource for future generations. Thanks for watching today's update. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss the latest water level reports and climate updates. Share this video with others who care about the future of the Colorado River, and let's keep the conversation going in the comments below. Together, awareness and action can make a real difference. Until next time, stay informed, stay prepared, and I'll see you in the next video.